Yeah, you know I mean, they're, they're all holes. And there's a hole up there. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of holes. Oh. All the joints are leaking. Okay. So holes around the back here in the flue. All right, so here's my next job. This boiler is locked out. Let's see if we can find out why. Don't know what that means. Have to have a look. Okay, so on here we've actually got an E5. You see that? There's an E5 on here, and it says E25 here. So we've got an E5 fault. We come over here, and it says oil supply excessive low pressure in the suction line. It's all to do with the flame failure. So I'm going to check the oil supply first. The filter is very dirty. All right, so I check the filter which is here. I thought I had a replacement, but I don't. So I did take it all apart. It's quite dirty. But I don't think that's going to be stopping the oil flow. It is dirty though. The oil's not very nice. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to put a vacuum gauge on it. Well, I'm going to put a pump on first and pull some oil through. Make sure I've got no air in it. And then I'll put a vacuum gauge on the boiler and reset it see where we're at. Alright so I just pulled through some oil. It was quite difficult actually. So I've got the uh, I've got the filter full there. It's full of oil now. That was very difficult to pull through so I'm wondering if that filter is causing the restriction. I'll check the vacuum now on the oil burner and we will see what sort of vacuum we're pulling and maybe it is that filter which I'll take out if I have to because I haven't got one. All right, so got my vacuum gauge, my pressure gauge set up. I can bleed it from here. If I can open it, I can. So I'm going to reset this, reset the boiler. I'm stood on the step now that comes out of the boiler. <sighs> so I can get a better, better view of what's going on and I can look down the sight glass as well. So let's see if we can uh, get this going. I'm more interested in the vacuum here, to be totally honest. Because um, I think that's where this problem may lie. Um, we'll see. Turned it on, I'm just waiting for this to sort itself out. Okay, so it's locked out again. I thought I heard it light, right? But maybe I didn't. Um, I'm going to open it up and have a look if there's a load of oil inside here and also I'm going to check the flame sensor there as well because you know it may, I, I need to know if it's lighting or not so there's either going to be loads of oil inside where it's not lighting or there's going to be no oil inside where it is lighting but it's not sensing in which case that probably needs cleaning potentially cool so the sensor looked clean it wasn't all the way home though so that might I doubt it actually but you know you never know uh, I've undone all this I'm not strong enough to do that one-handed. But yeah, it looks dry in there. Anyway, I'll, I'll do that one-handed in one sec. Okay, so in there looks pretty clean. I'm gonna get you to film the nozzle so I can see it. But yeah, in there looks all right. I need to clean, but it's not bad in any, by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, Jesus. A bit of a workout at 10 to 4. So I'm just going to look at this one for comparison. A red flashing light on the top there. Sounds like it lit. Straight away. That light's now solid red. I 
believe there's no little loaf flame. Although I can't see any flame in the sight glass. Because it's so dirty in there. But that's on and lit, okay? So let's see if we get a solid red light on this to show that it's uh so the good news is we know it's not sending uh oil there's we're not getting unburnt fuel going in here so that's that's good so i'm gonna get my multimeter set up to test the solenoids i'm guessing it lights stage one wait i know i know it lights stage one so that's this solenoid here i've just got to work out what's what on it actually before i do that so let me get set up to do that we're on three Fourteen bar, well not quite fourteen bar, twelve bar, twelve and a half bar, five. And it went out. It did light but it went out. Okay, I'm gonna phone Hovel now. Get to three, four. Twelve bar. It's lit. The vacuum staying stable. Pressure staying stable. It's not happy though. I mean that nozzle looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? Is there meant to be anything else on there? Shows. No, there isn't, no. So we withdraw the tube apparently, somehow, magically. Don't know how. Don't know. Okay, so if you look there, you can see the Sharpie mark, yeah? I marked that, and where that line, where the bit of the Sharpie sticks out, that's exactly where that bolt was. Yeah, when I took this off to check the nozzle. You can look now, I've put it on a different location because that location there, that tube, that's called the sight tube, that lines up with the sensor that you can't see. The sensor is right down there, anyway. So with that now lined up there, that sight tube is perfectly in line with the sensor. So I think that might be what the problem was, which would mean it's been like this since, I don't know, it's the truth. I don't know when it's been like that since. But I will say this boiler's got a thousand less hours than that one, so may well be a year, you know? Might be since it was last serviced, it was put on wrong. So yeah, but that's why I mark things when I take them off, because if I hadn't have marked that, I would have just put it back on and not realized that that was in the wrong place to begin with. So I've got this to set the head up, but I can't find in the book where it tells me what settings to use. Um, what's really cool though, is this actually comes fixed to the boiler. Anyway. All right, so I have managed to use this to set the, the basically the combustion head up here. So I'm gonna sort that out now. That's all back together. This tube should be in the right place. I'll put this back together and see if this thing fires. All right, so back on. I, d I did call Hobel. They uh, they said someone would call me back. So we'll reset that. Give this a sec and we should see this hopefully spring into life. There we go. So this is a heater, so once the heat has done its job, this boiler should try and fire. If it fires and stays lit, the red light should stay on that. That red light there that's flashing should remain on. It's flashing consistently, but for you, it misses a few. There, you see? In the real world, it doesn't. So once the heat is done, here we go. It's 
starting to run. There's a pre purge pumps going. Nice blue flame in there. There we go. That's what it was. This pressure's a little high. Be around 10 bar apparently and then 22 bar on high but we are running it's good news perfect so I'm just uh, doing the combustion okay so running at max now Two dots signifies max power. Uh, I can't get the CO2 up. I can't get that. They want 12.5 to 13, but but it's up and running. They'll save that for servicing because Hobel never got back to me. Perfect. Okay, so the, the low's fine. Let's get out of here. That's my bucket cleaned out, the funnel's cleaned out. This is where all the waste oil goes. Which then fits in there. Close that so it doesn't stick the van out. Tidy this up, give the cut back, and we're done. School has heat and hot water again. Where I had it before, but it's got two boilers now instead of one.